Hello and welcome to AM Guitar with me, Anjay, or Dave Rage, or Davridge, or Dvraj, or whatever you may have found me on socials. I digress. Today I want to discuss signature gear. Now this has come up because uh, the announcement that Gibson and Kurt Hammett are joining forces, he's joined their family again, and I'm expecting to see lots of Gibson branded Kirk Hammett related gear. Um, and it got me thinking a little bit about my views on signature guitars, and I wanted to get your opinions. So signature guitars I've always had a bit of a thing against because I've spent a really long time working to find what I sound like and what I play like. And I kind of always feel that if I was to go and buy a Kirk Hammett Gibson, then I would just be associated with that style of music and that tone. Now I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not sort of a famous guitarist or anything daft like that, but in my own mind it would be kind of a, I would be playing to be him. Like when I was younger I wanted to be Slash, so I got a cheap Epiphone Les Paul and I kind of got an amp that sounded a bit like a Marshall. Um, so I suppose if it's the cheaper end of things, I suppose that's a good thing. You can sound like your heroes, but when you're looking at kind of the, the proper end, the, the expensive end of signature gear, which is where a lot of it goes, are they being made for players or are they being made for collectors? A bit like maybe the Jagstang conversation the other day. So when I sort of look at signature guitars, there are certain different types. There's a signature guitar, which is just a guitar that is branded with a signature and maybe has one or two tweaks. Then you've got things like the John Mayer uh, Silver Sky, which is like a whole new uh, style of guitar for PRS and it has it become its own thing in its own right. Uh, then you have like a Brian May Special, uh, the, 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 his Red Special guitar, where it's like a whole new type of guitar. So that's kind of one end of it as well. And I like that end. I like the end where it's something completely different um, and they've made something new. Uh, I absolutely love the St. Vincent from uh, Music Man, for instance. I'd love one of those. I'd also love a Joe Bonamassa Epiphone, but that's because I love that Joe Bonamassa has kind of done his signature gear through the cheaper brand, making it more accessible to people. So I wonder if part of my issue, other than the, the whole trying to find who I sound like rather than emulating someone else, is that I'm not a collector, I'm a player. So I want guitars that play and that I'm not scared of damaging or scratching. Whereas if I had some big expensive uh, signature guitar, I'd be terrified of playing it. So if you're a collector, let me know your thoughts. If you're a player, let me know your thoughts. Then there's also the kind of um, inbuilt obsolescence of signature gear. So take the picks that I have been using for a while now, the, uh, the Rabia Flow picks from Dunlop. I bought them as soon as they came out because I love Rabia and the pick seemed really nice and it is a great plectrum. However, it occurred to me if I get used to using that plectrum and Rabia and Dunlop stop working together and they no longer make it, then I'm in a position where I can no longer get the pick I'm used to using. So I actually stopped using it and went back to kind of jazz picks, um, making my own Swiss picks, things that are a bit more generic and aren't going to disappear because of a relationship breaking down. And I think it's the same with uh, pedals as well, because, you know, I love the Zach Wild MXR Overdrive, for instance. Um, but do you get into a position potentially where you've bought a signature pedal that you absolutely adore, they stop making it, and then yours breaks, and you're in a position where you need to then go on the second-hand market and pay through the nose to get a replacement? So, again, part of my sort of issue is this inbuilt obsolescence where if relationships break down between an artist and a manufacturer then the signature gear disappears and you're left in a position where you can no longer use that gear because you might not want to get hold of it so are you then better off just using standard gear and getting your tone out of that amps as well you know i i always wanted the slash um the slash uh marshall head but actually it's just a very slightly tweaked Jubilee or something. So it's kind of, it's not worth it in some respects because you can get his tone because he didn't have a signature guitar to make his tone. That's the other thing, you know, all these guys who have signature gear, they made their kind of mark in the guitar industry without signature gear. They used their own, they just bought gear and used it. 
maybe got it tweaked and then somebody slapped their name on it and a brand on it and said here's the signature amp or guitar or pedal so i wonder if that's part of it so if you're a collector let me know your thoughts if you're a player let me know your thoughts if you don't like guitars or anything why are you here it's just because it's me isn't it you're just here for me no mm -hmm. yeah, fair enough you got you came here by accident fair enough uh, you were looking for the, 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 the average function in Excel and I appeared. Um, nerd joke for you there. Right, so <laughs> let me know your thoughts on signature guitars, signature pedals, plectrums, sweatbands, amps, leads, whatever it may be. What do you think about it? Is it a great investment? Is it a great thing for a player to have? Or is it just an absolute waste of time and money? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Oh. Uh -huh.